Hello there, um, this is Tamil, and today I will go over some basic workflows for Clip Studio Paint landscapes. I love painting landscapes. My characters are not that good, but landscapes, I like my landscapes. Um, first of all, I want to say that you should start with the line art, which, which is what I'm doing. I, I'm Honestly, I changed the shapes so much to the point where it doesn't really matter, but it helps to distinguish like the basic uh, shapes before you even start out. So I think you should do that. It helps to get better results. Uh, the next tip that I have is you should definitely look for multiple reference images. And a lot of artists, they look for that one reference image and then they try to paint it. And I say that you should do multiple references uh, because if you have one reference image, you try to copy that or you try to, um, you know, paint it as closely as possible. But a lot of times it's actually better if you don't do that. So you should have multiple because if you have multiple images, you can actually borrow from each one a little bit and try to add it to another one, right? You, you have a mountain here and I, you like it, you have another picture and you have the grass texture and you want to add that and you're trying to combine each one and it actually forces you to be more creative and more mindful of your choices and how you paint. And another one is actually a really, really good tip that I uh, learned throughout the years from other artists is that when you do a study like this, right? This is mainly for studying and uh, trying to learn from a landscape photo or whatever it is. When you have a main picture that you want to try to accomplish, change your canvas size. So if you have a wide picture, you should definitely squeeze your um, maybe closer together maybe like a square or make it tall or whatever it is just make it different and that will help you actually study better because uh, a lot of times you again have that picture and you want to copy it but if you have a different aspect ratio for your canvas if you have too tall or if it's not wide enough your uh, brain will actually be like, well, I can't fit everything I have to choose now. Um, what do I keep from the reference image? What do I add? And now the composition is different, right? You have a lot of mountains in the white picture and now you can only fit one into a square one and it's like, well, which one do I choose? How do I combine them? Maybe I make them smaller, maybe I make them one behind the other. And that's what I did. I actually had my reference image and other reference images on my second monitor. And I had um, one main one that was a very wide one and I couldn't fit everything. And I was actually struggling with that because I couldn't just copy the shapes anymore. I just had to come up with something of my own. And when I finished the painting and I compared it to my reference image, I was like, oh my God, like this is very different from the original image and I actually created something new and I learned a lot so I highly recommend doing that and uh, for reference images you can you know go wherever just look up landscape photography and just find something cool I, I have my own personal uh, library that I found and I paid for it uh, so if you have any resources actually that you would love to share that is my favorite thing in the world like when people share art knowledge that's like the best thing ever because so if you if you have any resources for landscape um, photos or you have like a favorite uh, landscape photographer that you have just share it in the description I mean uh, in the comment section I would love to check it out after you're done uh, blocking out the shapes uh, I'm taking it very uh, simple because if you do it also realistically right if you try to accomplish real realism a lot of times people get into a habit of uh, copying details and like getting into the, the small uh, shapes and all of those things. And I think that you don't learn a lot from it as much as you would from stylized and simplified painting. So I highly suggest simplifying it as much as possible 
and I, in the in this painting I actually had a big problem and I couldn't figure it out because the texture that was on the picture is very heavy like most of the mountains were filled with rocks and all those things and, I, and it's like where is the shadow where's the light coming from I have no idea because it was so busy it forced me again it forced me to find a better way to paint to find those big shapes that are there so I highly recommend doing that I'm also using a super simple round brush that is just an oil brush I believe and I don't even mix color with it for the most part because a lot of people rely on brushes and I mean it's great to use some specified those uh, traditional brushes that give you like a really nice results but in here I'm actually abusing <laughs> I'm abusing the lasso tool because you can get really nice shapes with the lasso tool and not worry about um, pretty much anything else just use that and use any brush you want and it helps you create and block out the shapes like really really nicely and uh, for blocking out you should be by your painting into uh, front and middle and background because for landscapes it's really important to uh, create depth and an easy way to do that is just add black to the very front and the way the way far is usually white but you can also uh, divide these also into three different colors into three three different values so if you have the front and I have the trees for example right uh, I can have the, the rocks at the bottom have it very dark and then the tree trunks are a little bit lighter and then the leaves are the lightest even though it's all going to be a little bit different um, the entire front um, and the foreground are going to be like way darker compared to everything else in the painting I am also checking my values with black and white all the time um, an easy way to do that is to create a new layer, cover it with uh, black, just pure black, and set it the color to um, set the layer to color, and that will actually turn your um, image into grayscale. And it really, really helps you to establish those values early on, so you don't have to worry about it too much. You can see that I'm just keep adding new shapes and keep adding new things to the painting. I actually specifically made it so that. All of my um, for this painting is on one layer. For example, all of the mountains and uh, you know the left side in the, in the background, it's all one layer because um, I've been forced to keep moving things around and keep lassoing things and making small mistakes that actually forced me to add more texture to it. So because I'm using a super simple brush that is just a round brush and the oil and I don't have much that I can exploit in terms of texture I actually force myself to use one layer and it helps me to add more texture as I make mistakes and you know happy little accidents because I keep adding things to it and I keep um, you know fidgeting around with it and adding more lasso things that forces me to make mistakes with the lasso tool, makes mistakes with my brush. And you can see that I'm not even being careful with my, with my brush. I just do the lasso and then I scribble it. I literally um, scribble it and I like to scribble it into the way that I want to show where the rock is facing. So if, if it's like a, a plain rock that is uh, facing maybe the sun, I'm going to be, be making a very straight on scribble and if it's uh, grass I can see where uh, the grass would be going down or which angle would it be going and if it's too strong I can just go ahead and um, you know lower the opacity of that one layer and then now I can get that nice small texture to it so I really like um, doing that and I also add some airbrushing because I can just uh, again simplify the, te the texture, simplify the shapes, add some light without uh, working too much on it. And um, you can see that I actually lowered the horizon line 
uh, you can see uh, the perspective tutorial on my other video and you can read an article about it if you want I made a whole thing with perspective tools for clip to paint it's really um, not that hard and it's pretty easy I also talk about perspective a little bit so if you want to check that out go ahead and I lowered the horizon line because the water the mountains and the sky were all the same size so if you look at it though before the water and everything else they were all the same ratio but then I decided that let me add more variety to it so I made water the least uh, space taking up space in my canvas and I made in the mountains a little bit more and then the sky the most so now it's like one to three ratio because it helps you to give it a more dynamic look and don't always uh, also try to divide everything into three different uh, sizes and shapes so a simple rule of thumb is the same for the values is like you have uh, big shapes, medium shapes, and small shapes. And the same thing goes for detailing. So if you have like a um, big mountain, you can look at it from very far and you can see that the top is usually very detailed and then the middle of the mountain is a little bit less detailed. And the bottom, you shouldn't have any detail because you want your viewer to look up. You want to, you know, guide your audience into that top part. So in here, I'm also doing the same thing. I made the trees very simple. Uh, obviously, I should be working more on it. I think I could have improved it a lot. But if you look at it, the final image, the mountain on the right has the most texture, the most detail, and it kind of drags away from everything else. And you barely notice the trees because I wanted it to be more simple so that you can actually focus on the mountain first. And you don't have to, you know, um, the trees are already really dark in terms of it's like purely black. It's almost has no sun. And because of that, it's very, very heavy on the attention. But if you just remove the details and you simplify it, you actually start focusing on the background and you guide your viewers into that one spot that you wanted to look into. And I think that's what the most important thing is when you try to study um, like an image or an artwork is to see and um, figure out where does the viewer wants to look, where should he look or um, the thing is that a lot of times we place these things that are grabbing our attention but is it the thing that the artist wanted you to look at? That's the real question. You should really figure out where is that focal point, right? And uh, in here also uh, decided that I wanted to get uh, water texture from Clip Studio Paint Asset Store. So you can go ahead and find that texture. It's actually free. It's made by, I believe, Clip Studio Paint. You can find that in the article. And I put it on overlay and I reduced the opacity. Obviously I could have painted it, but at the same time uh, with a round brush, it would take me forever. And then that's not the main point, right? I don't want you, I don't want you to look at the water. I wanted you to look at the mountain where the, all the, the texture is, all the trees are at and all those things. So just keep in mind about focal point. I actually start adding more airbrushing. So airbrush is the other brush that I use is just simple airbrush that comes with Clip Studio Paint and I try to simplify it and give more definition for some of the mountains because uh, the further you go, the further the smoke is gonna come in and take over that um, mountain. It's just the fog is everywhere, right? And uh, it's a pretty easy way to establish more perspective if you want. And uh, actually for the final, I also added clouds. Um, I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> water and clouds are not my best. I still, I, I practice them a lot and then whenever I have time, I definitely paint them, but um, sometimes they just don't turn out that good. So that's why I'm saying, um, if you, you should focus on the things that are your strengths, but when you're studying, you should obviously learn how to do it. But if you're doing like a final image that is for someone, you should try to add things that are, you're not 
sure about and they're strong enough, uh, you can just add them with pictures or maybe a brush or maybe something else. So in here, I added a whole uh, sky cloud thing from also again Clip Studio Paint uh, Material Store. I added it at the very top and I just set it to overlay at very like low opacity and um, that just helped me to see where the painting is going because I can also add to it right I can just paint on top so that is what um, you should be also doing because you want to start with big shapes and big color uh, changes like oh this should be red or this should be green this is more dark um, you, you should focus on these little um, you know problem solving things before you get to the um, the little details of adding trees and little you know uh, reflections and stuff like that and uh, you can see that at the very end at the very end I actually went ahead and copied the painting flipped it vertically and I added it to the bottom of the water and also set it to like a small um, uh, opacity and I blurred it with uh, motion blur you can check it out in the clip studio paint article and I use that to add the reflection for the water so I hope uh, you learned something and I had a lot of fun painting it uh, let me know if you have any questions I just went over like general things that you should be concerned about and I had a lot of uh, obviously watered down stuff because I, I, I wanted to give you as much uh, details as possible, but at the same time, um, I don't know how to <laughs> transfer my knowledge to other people because a lot of these things you should like learn on your own and like experiment with it. So all I can say is that you should uh, create a lot of unfinished pieces and try to study from them and don't try to focus on details, don't try to focus on hyper-realism, you know? Because uh, learning is actually through that small experience of failing, small fails from that like little accidents, that helps a lot. It helps me a lot. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for listening. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. And I will leave the article link at the bottom. And uh, happy painting.